So hello everybody and welcome to the Fresh Base blog. I'm Jill, your host, and today I'm here with Jennifer Ziliato, who is the owner of Ziliato Clothing Designs. And uh, we're here on the Danforth today, but you have two other store locations. That's right. Uh, Queen West and Bloor West Village. Perfect. And so how did you find your spaces when you were looking? Uh, actually, a lot of it was my husband's doing. He really loves that part of this job. So for Queen West, it was purely luck. Somebody was going out of business and sent us an email and my husband jumped on it, which at the time when we got it, I was like, oh, are we going to be able to afford it? Um, Bloor West, I think we got a real estate agent and there was quite a few spaces, sorry, sorry, for the Danforth, not Bloor West. There were quite a few spaces available and it took a little bit of time before we found this space, which we loved. And then for Bloor West, my husband did something that was really smart and I would do this again in the future. He contacted the Bloor West Village business, uh, the BIA, the, you know, the business association, and told them that they, he was looking. Because okay. we already had two other locations, they could look at our website and have an idea of who we are, who right. we were. And then when a space came available, they contacted us. So that was perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And so, were there certain features you were looking for in the retail space for your business, or...? Um, an airy space, light, I like a lot of light, obviously a nice window, um, great neighborhood. Like, we really like being in neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, so that's always key, and we always look for that. A neighborhood that's relatively developed, that's busy, um, that has quite a lot of shopping already on it, otherwise you're not on the... You pay a little bit more in rent, for sure, mm -hmm. but if you're on a side street, it just doesn't work for us. Right, right. And so, you're a small business and you have a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, can you share some challenges that you've had, either starting up or just in terms of the effort that's required to maintain a small business? Well, cash flow is always my number one. <laughs> I think everyone <laughs> is going to say that. <laughs> That's why always my number one challenge, just because with the nature of this business, you're always putting out so much money before you're getting it back in. Mm -hmm. That's retail. Yeah. Um, but I think a big challenge too is uh, time and learning how to manage your time and how to prioritize what's really important. Because right. I think small business owners get caught in that becoming a jack of all trades and not focusing on growing the business you're in the business and you don't have time to grow it. Right. So I've spent a lot of time doing research on that, um, listening to seminars and that kind of thing to remind me how to not get stuck in that kind of day-to-day -day thing. Right. And so that I can think big, big picture, I can think five years from now. And I think with any kind of goals that you have, it's writing it down and looking at those goals every single day so that you can remember that you're on track to meet those goals. And you will at one point or another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so always growing is... Is sort of where you want to have That's your head. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would be probably your your main piece of advice then, if you were to. Yeah, you know, I guess so. Something. Yeah, I guess so. I would say uh, just, and also too, I think that we sometimes because when we are ambitious and want to grow, we get caught up in kind of um, forgetting to enjoy the journey. Right. So, you know, there's going to be days when stupid little things happen and you've got to try to keep a level head, which I'm not always good at doing, um, but not, not always going into panic mode because then you'll have more fun and uh, it, all, it all gets solved in the end, you know? Yeah. Like, for instance, last week we had our big opening party for the spring-summer launch here at the Danforth and at 2 o'clock that afternoon, half the electricity went out. Oh. So I didn't have an interact machine. I couldn't get an engineer right away. The en uh, sorry, the electrician. The electricians came at like I don't know four o'clock or something, five thirty, five o'clock, and I was freaking out. And I had to go pick up my kids in the schoolyard, and I was sitting there like, ah. Oh. And then that night, we they they hooked up the interact machine, so that ended up working out. But that night, everyone walked in and didn't even notice that there were no lights. They were like, oh, it's an ambiance. So at first, I was like, I'm sorry, there's no lights. And everyone was like, oh, I thought that was on purpose. I thought it was an ambiance. So after a while, I stopped saying it, because why highlight your faults when right. it could see it seemed like a plus to everybody yeah, else? You're the only one that knows. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, so your clothing is all Canadian made. That's right. And um, that's something that's pretty amazing, especially in this day and age. I know. Um, but but beyond that, um, what would you what would you say defines the Ziliano brand, and what kind of experience do customers have when they come in to see you? 
So I think that, first of all, to define us, we do uh, really comfortable clothing. You know what, I hate to use the word practical, but it really is, I try to do practical clothing that's still stylish. Mm -hmm. I listen to what customers say when they're coming in for the first time, and they'll say things like wearable, um, comfortable, easy, stylish, but not too out of, uh, like, it, it doesn't scream trend. Right. I think it screams elegance and longevity. Right. Um, so for me, that's what how I kind of define it, and I think that's really ultimately my style, something that's classic that can last for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, to I think the difference between coming into a boutique or as opposed to going to a big box store is that you want to get to know your customers. We want to help style women. A lot of women are not good at shopping. They can't stand it. They don't know how to put things together. So we try to do that for them and make it easy. And I think that's really what um, makes the experience here really fun because you feel like you've stepped into your sister's house and they're styling you and getting you all organized. So you leave and you're like, ah, oh, that was easy. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really great, and um, is there anything else you want to add before we sign off? I think that's it. I probably talked a little bit long. No. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so come and visit us at any of our three locations, or you can check out our website, or check out our weekly Style Fix videos. Those are really fun. So, thanks so much. Thank you very much. My and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.